Hello everyone. So today Siddhar Singh from AIML Competency will be presenting his first knowledge session uh, on the RAG with Knowledge Graph. So basic focus of this topic is to demonstrate how knowledge graphs enhances the accuracy of our question answering over the documents are performing basically the RAG approach, traditional RAG approach. So he will be explaining everything about that. So Siddhar, you can continue. Yeah, sure. Hey everyone, thanks for joining the session. Uh, I am Siddhar Singh and today I'll be take, uh, talking about combining retrieval augmented generation or RAG with knowledge graph. So before we begin, let's quickly review our knowledge etiquettes to ensure a smooth session. First, punctuality. Please join a few join a few minutes early so we can start and finish on time. Feedback is also appreciated. It helps improve for future sessions and remember to keep devices on silent mode. Feel free to step out if you need to take a call. And finally, let's keep conversations to a minimum to keep the focus here. Thanks for helping make uh, knowledge a great experience. Uh, let's start with a quick look at our agenda. First, I'll give a, a brief overview of Generative AI to set the stage, followed by an introduction to retrieval augmented generation. And then we'll look uh, at uh, why drag is valuable, especially for AI-driven applications, and cover some core concepts like vector embeddings. Uh, and then we'll get into the, <laughs> the architecture of our RAG system, its advantages, and some of the challenges of traditional RAG. After that, I'll introduce knowledge graphs, explain how they are created, and how they can be used to enhance RAG. We'll take a look at the architecture of RAG when combined with knowledge graphs, and compare the benefits of this graph RAG approach over traditional RAG systems. I'll then walk through some real-world use cases for graph RAG, and we'll cover how to build one using Llama Index. Okay, so first of all, let's get a quick overview of Generative AI and explore its significant impact across various sectors. Generative AI is a branch of artificial intelligence that <coughs> employs machine learning algorithms to create outputs resembling human-like test images and predictions. This technology is transformative in industries like healthcare, finance, and media, where it turns and com complex data into actionable insights. For example, in healthcare, generative AI analyzes patients' information to aid diagnostics and tailor treatments. In finance, it assists in for fraud detection and risk assess assessment by identifying anomalies in transaction data. Meanwhile, uh, the media industry benefits from automated content creation, streamlining the generation of articles and graphics. Generative AI also revolutionizes data processing with applications in natural language processing, enabling chatbots and virtual assistants to communicate more effectively. Additionally, it enhances predictive analytics, allowing businesses to forecast trends and improve strategic planning. Finally, its ability to extract insight from large data set is invaluable. By recognizing pattern within complex information, generative AI generates outputs that reflect human thought process, empowering organizations to make informed data-driven decisions. In summary, generative AI is reshaping how we understand and utilize information, unlocking new opportunities for innovation across various domains. Now we'll look what is Retrieval Augmented Generation. So it is an innovative approach that merges retrieval methods with generative models to generate responses grounded in contextually relevant information. This synergy significantly <coughs> enhances both the accuracy and reliability of the generated outputs. One of the standout benefits of RAG is its ability to improve performance in AI models. By retrieving data from directly that directly pertains to a specific query, RAG enables the model to navigate complex questions with greater efficiency and nuance. This retrieval mechanism ensures that responses are not only informed but also closely aligned with the user's intent. RAG signs in applications such as summarization, question answering, and customer support. In these scenarios, <coughs> the model generates answers based on specific, specifically retrieved content leading to responses that are more precise, relevant, and context-aware. This targeted approach makes RAG a powerful tool for enhancing user interactions and delivering high-quality information. 
now let's look at some of the key reasons why reg is essential first generating <coughs> generating model so often like real time and up to date data since they are trained on static data sets they might not include the latest information for example if you ask who won the cricket match yesterday the model might run, might respond with outdated information directing you to check uh, current resources instead then there's the issue of hallucinations where models can produce inaccurate or made up responses especially with ambiguous prompts for example if asked about the workflows of quantum computing in data analytics a model might uh, produce an answer that over simplifies or misinterprets the technology finally uh, generative models often lack <coughs> domain specific knowledge they may provide an inaccurate or overly broad responses on specific specialized topics like pediatric neurology or whatever which could lead to misleading information or uh, rag helps address these issues by retrieving relevant up to date information to ground the generative responses and making them more accurate and contextually relevant so before moving to the architecture of rag system i would like to uh, talk about the vector embeddings so uh, as uh, vector embeddings are numerical representations that place words or concepts in a multi dimensional space so uh, here in this each word is represented by a vector with different uh, different dimensions capturing various aspects of meaning this allows similar words to be positioned closer together in the vector space in the image on this slide you will see how embeddings work for example uh, there is uh, there are entities like cat kitten dog houses and there are some features like living being feline human gender royalty verb <coughs> plural so <coughs> oh, when we pass our entities to a embedding model what it does is to, it uh, gives uh, the entity some uh, numerical values on various features like uh, it gives 0.6 value to the cat on living being feature and 0.9 on feline feature uh, so on for every entity and uh, and the features uh, work uh, as a dimension like uh, there are seven features so the uh, vector embedding that will be created will be seven dimension so <coughs> then uh, we plot the uh, vector uh, we, we plot our uh, the chart using uh, dimensional reduction algorithms so in the, the in this plot we can see that uh, a uh, kitten and cat are uh, close together reflecting their similarity as uh, they are very similar in characteristics and uh, while words like dog and houses are uh, farther apart showing less contextual relation uh, the distance between vectors help to determine determine how closely related two words are in rag systems the similarity is essential for retrieving the most relevant information as it enables the model to pull in contextually related data that may not use the exact same words so yeah they are that are vector vector embeddings now let's see the <coughs> architecture of our x system so first of all uh, we ingest our document to a embedding model that uh, that uh, uh, divides our document in uh, several chunks and generate embeddings for that document and <coughs> when the embeddings are generated we store it in a vector database so the embeddings are stored in a numerical representation and so we store it store it in a vector database it can be of uh, any vector database and after the embeddings are stored uh, the user sends a prompt or query to our <coughs> rag system and when the system gets the query it is simply uh, passes the query to the uh, embedding model again uh, and the embedding model uh, generates the Uh, embedding for the query and after the it is uh, it is uh, it it is passed to the retriever which then uh, calculates the similarity between the embedding of the query and the embeddings stored in the vector database and after calculating the distance distance between the embedding of query and uh, the embeddings in the vector database it uh, 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 retrieves the uh, top n chunks from the database and Uh, forwards it to the uh, our system uh, our, our rag system which will be then forwarded to the large language model along with the uh, 
prompt or the query and uh, oh, the retrieved information from the vector database will work as the co context for our large language model so when the <laughs> it has the relevant information about the query it will generate more informative and more accurate response and then the generated text response will be shown to the user so yeah that's the basic uh, overview of uh, rex systems working now uh, <coughs> Oh, now let's talk about <coughs> some key advantages of using RAG in generative AI. First, RAG increases the relevance of responses by pulling data from context specific sources. It ensures that answers are more aligned with what the user actually needs. For example, if someone asks who won the cricket match yesterday, RAG can retrieve up to date information from, <coughs> from a web page to provide a precise answer or something a typical generative model might struggle with due to static training data. Next, RAG handles complex queries better. By retrieving relevant pieces of data, it enables the model to address nuanced or technical questions more effectively. In the example on the slide, when asked about data analysis using quantum computing, RAG provides a grounded response based on specific retrieved details about avoiding any vague or inaccurate explanations. Lastly, RAG helps with reducing misinterpretation of domain specific, specific data. It accesses structured and specialized information to provide accurate responses, especially useful in fields like medicine, finance, or law. In our example, if someone asks about recent advancements in pediatric neurology, RAG retrieves the latest medical information to answer correctly, avoiding broad or generalized statements. These advantages make RAG a powerful tool for making generative AI responses more accurate and reliable across various domains. Oh, let's take a look <coughs> at some challenges that traditional RAG methods face. First, there is a struggle with connecting information from different sources. Like traditional RAG <coughs> often falls short with questions that need a mix of knowledge from multiple places leading to incomplete or broken responses. If someone asks something that pulls from several sources, traditional RAG might not bring it all together seamlessly. Next, uh, limited understanding of meaning can be a problem. Traditional RAG doesn't allow, always summarize well across large data sets or long documents. Instead, it might return separate pieces of information that don't fully answer broad or complex questions. This can make it hard to get a com complete picture when needed. Finally, traditional RAG relies heavily on vector similarity. While it's useful for simpler cases, it may miss the mark for abstract co or complex queries that need more structured and context. This focus on vector similarity can sometimes lead to context mismatch, or limiting the quality of the response. These challenges show us why more advanced methods like integrating RAG with knowledge graphs are needed to deliver deeper and more accurate responses. Now let's introduce knowledge graphs and why they are valuable. So a knowledge graph represents information in a structured way using nodes and edges. Here, nodes represent entities like people, places, or objects, while edges represent the relationships between these entities. Think of it like a map where each connection adds more context to the data. For example, if you have data on John and Google, the knowledge graph can connect them through a relationship like worksite, making the information clearer and more meaningful. One of the key advantages of knowledge graph is in contextual data mapping. Instead of treating each piece of data as isolated, a knowledge graph shows how everything is connected. This network of relationships allows us to draw insights and understand complex connections in a way traditional databases can't. Oh, this structure is what makes knowledge graphs so powerful for enhancing RAG as they can add layers of context that help generate more accurate and relevant responses. <coughs> oh, let's discuss how knowledge graphs are formed. Oh, so the foundation of a knowledge graph lies in entity extraction and relationship mapping. So in this process, <coughs> 
it involves identifying entities within documents like names places and defining the relationships between them in a structured format known as which is known as triplets or uh, triplet typically includes three components first one is subject then predicate and then object so the subject is the entity or concept that is being discussed then the predicate is the relationship or property connecting the subject and object and the predicate is the uh, text that is written on the edge so and the object is the entity or value connected to the subject for example con <coughs> consider the sentence paul graham has interest in programming and art from this we can extract triplets like paul graham <coughs> is an individual paul graham has interest in programming paul graham has interest in art by organizing these data into these triplets knowledge graphs can capture detailed relationships that make the information easier to query and understand ultimately leading to more insightful responses in applications like rag oh here uh, it is a example of knowledge graph like uh, we can see that uh, Uh, love is uh, located in paris uh, i feel tower is located in paris and uh, da vinci painted mona lisa james likes mona lisa so these are all the entities and on the edge uh, uh, the relationship between the entities is written like in this case lily is interested in da vinci lily is the subject and da vinci is the predicate uh, uh, object and is interested in in is the uh, predicate so yeah that's how our knowledge graph is is formed so now let's move forward to see how uh, the retrieval augmented generation is enhanced with the knowledge graph first graph rack combines the power of retrieval with structured knowledge by integrating knowledge graph <coughs> knowledge graphs ai systems can access organized information enabling more precise and relevant data retrieval second knowledge graph significantly improve how rag understands queries they allow the system to connect the dots between various pieces of information especially for complex or abstract questions this interconnectedness helps the ai find the most relevant context for the query at hand finally graph rag enhances the uh, accuracy of responses with the structured data backing the information retrieval process the ai can provide context aware outputs this means the responses are not only more relevant but also more insightful and making the overall interaction more effective by leveraging the strengths of knowledge graphs graph rag stands to improve both the quality and relevance of ai generated content so oh, now let's see the architecture of rag with knowledge graph so as i have uh, uh, told you, you guys all about the architecture of rag in that we uh, ingest our document and then create uh, embeddings it is same with uh, the architecture of knowledge graph we ingest our document but in this case we create the knowledge graph and store it in a graph database the graph database can be neo4j or nebula graph there are many graph databases we store it into graph databases and then uh, we uh, can ask questions and <coughs> and the retriever will uh, retrieve the relevant information from the graph database so yeah when uh, the system gets prompt the prompt is converted into embeddings and then it is sent to vector index where it <laughs> searches for the relevant information in the knowledge graph and after the re the relevant results are uh, extracted from the vector index or the uh, graph database it is sent to the llm along with the prompt and then the uh, llm generates the response and uh, gives it its back to the user uh, so that's the structure of architecture of knowledge graph now let's discuss the key benefits of graph rag compared to traditional rag first graph rag util utilizes structured knowledge graphs which significantly <laughs> significantly improve how we handle complex queries this results in richer and more contextually relevant answers here are some of the main benefits like comprehensive answers graph rag provides holistic responses that span across complex domains 
ensuring users receive well rounded information by connecting uh, by connecting related pieces of information graph like increases precision <coughs> delivering more accurate responses unlike static array graph rack can adapt to evolving knowledge it stays current ensuring that the information is up to date and then seamless integration this approach effectively combines information from multiple documents offering a more cohesive and responses to queries advanced reasoning graph rack enables advanced reasoning about the relationships between entities allowing for deeper insights and hidden insights it can uncover previously unnoticed connections within data sets enhancing understanding abstract query handling graph rag is adept at managing high level queries making it versatile for various use cases and uh, with its structure the context graph rag also reduces noise in data set providing clearer insights overall this structured approach to interconnected data stands outside superior to traditional methods <coughs> especially in documents heavy industries it allows organizations to leverage their data more effectively and unlock valuable insights <coughs> now let's look at some practical use cases for graph rag across various industries first up is healthcare graph rag can significantly enhance diagnostic support medical research and personalized treatment recommendations by analyzing patient data alongside existing medical literature it helps healthcare professionals make more informed decisions in the finance sector graph rag is invaluable for risk analysis fraud detection and market research financial institutions can navigate complex data sets and adhere to regulations more effectively improving their overall decision making process uh, and the legal legal industry also stands to benefit as the graph rag streamlines legal research by quickly connecting users to relevant case laws statutes and precedents making it easier for legal professionals to find the information they need in e-commerce graph rag enhances product recommendations by understanding the relationships between products and customer preferences this leads to improved user experiences and can drive high, uh, higher sales finally the uh, other sectors also such as academic research public policy and telecommunications also leverage graph rag ability to manage and interpret complex data structures enabling better insights and decision making these diverse applications showcase the versatility and effectiveness of graph rag in addressing real, real world challenges now let's explore how to build graph rag using llama index so first of all let's see what is llama index llama index is an orchestration framework especially designed to simplify data ingestion indexing and querying when working with large language models it facilitates the effective creation of knowledge graphs which help connect disparate pieces of information and enhance document understanding so here's a step by step workflow for implementing graph rag first, <coughs> first of all or uh, start by installing the necessary libraries that allow you to work with llama index and various llms for <coughs> for secure access to apis store your api keys in a .env file this keeps the sensitive information protected then gather and store the relevant documents from a specified directory this will form the basis of for your knowledge graph then choose a appropriate llm um, options might include models from grok openai or gemini or whatever and select an embedding model such as you can choose any one from any from the hugging face then uh, we will create the property graph index using the property graph index from documents method <coughs> from the llama index this index serves as the foundation for your knowledge graph so the uh, this index is the uh, thing that is uh, going to be stored in the uh, graph database uh, after the creation of index the uh, save the generated graph for future reference and then uh, <coughs> when it comes to the querying part 
we will load the index from storage and set up a query engine that will allow users to ask questions and retrieve relevant information from the uh, knowledge graph. So this workflow, yeah, this is the workflow of building the graph like with Lama index. Uh, anyone have any questions this far? I'll take it as a no. So let's get to the demo part. Let me share my screen again. I think it's possible. Yeah. yeah. So here is the my code. It is visible. So yeah. Oh, uh, first of all, uh, here is the main function which will create the graph. First of all, we will load the documents from the, so you can choose any document. I have chosen a book written by Plato, but I have just uh, used it seven pages because otherwise the, it will take a long, uh, long time. So yeah, I <coughs> took a book for written by Plato and stored in our documents directory. And uh, yeah, for, first of all, you will <coughs> need the APIs. So. Currently, I am using Grok and Google Gemini API. For Grok API, you can uh, go to Grok's pay, Grok, search Grok, and then you can get a free API key here. Here, you create a new API key, and you can give it a whatever name you can you want, and then uh, you can choose. <coughs> Uh, the, uh, these models from Grok, like uh, there are many models you can see here. You can ch choose whatever model, and it supports Python and JavaScript, and uh, JSON and curl are also supported. So, yeah, you can get your API key from here and then store it uh, in the .env file. And uh, same goes for the Google API key, you can get uh, from these Google's generative AI page. After storing the .env oh, API key in the .env files, we can start the process. And uh, for first of all, we will load the documents. And after the documents are loaded, we will initialize our LLM. So uh, for my purpose, I am using uh, currently using Llama 3 from Grok. So you can choose any model. And <laughs> then we will initialize the embedding models. And for your uh, embedding model, I'm using uh, all mini LM L6 LV version 2. It is a embedding model of, from the hugging phase. So yeah, and when the uh, LLM and embedding models are initialized, uh, we can start uh, creating index. So this uh, function will create the index from the uh, documents that is being fed to it using, using the LLM and embedding model. So what it does, it uh, create, uh, creates, uh, it divides the document in several chunks, and then it passes the, those uh, uh, the chunks to the LLM along with a prompt to generate triplets from that uh, document. So as I have told you earlier, told you guys earlier that uh, triplets are subject, predicate, and object. So it will <coughs> generate uh, various number of triplets from the document, and when the triplets are generated, it will create embeddings for those triplets and uh, uh, after the embeddings are <coughs> created, it will create a graph by creating paths and uh, edges between the uh, entities. So yeah, so that is the creation of indexes. And when the <coughs> index is created, we can save the graph uh, using the uh, save network graph function uh, from the Llama index, it will save a, a graph in a HTML format, which is which is very interactive. Means it will not be used for the query purpose, but it will be visual. It is the visual representation of the graph that is made by the Llama index index creation function. So, after the graph is saved, for my purpose, I am saving the 
graph currently locally, but you can use any graph database like Neo4j or Nebula graph. The Lama and this provide uh, integration with uh, many graph databases. So let me <coughs> run this one. So it asks, asks for two choices if I want to create the graph or to query the graph. So firstly, I would like to create the graph. So the creation of graphic started. In the parsing of nodes, the, basically it has divided the documents in several chunks. So my document has seven pages. So it has divided it into seven chunks, as you can see. <coughs> and now it is. Uh, creating triplets from the documents using LLM. Yeah, so LLM's function is completed. Now it is generating embeddings. Yeah, so embeddings is also generated. Once this process is completed, we can see <laughs> that in the graph folder, there is a graph that is being saved. So this is the graph that I have saved here. So <laughs> if you want to <laughs> visualize the graph that is being created, you can open it with any browser. So, yeah, let me show it to you guys. So here is the graph that is being generated. Like here we can see that uh, Socrates is the entity here, and uh, it is the it is a uh, it is a subject. Socrates is a, uh, is a subject, and here he, he was not wise at all. So Socrates thought he was not wise at all. These are the uh, entities uh, that are uh, identified the LLM. And, uh, and so on here, like Socrates believes in gods, gods have children. Uh, these, uh, it is an interconnected graph that, that is being made by the <coughs> LLM. So yeah, you can see here, like here, oh, Socrates oh, and accused, Miletius accused Socrates. And yeah, you can see the graphs here. These are all the uh, interconnected nodes. So <laughs> this is how the graph reg creates the graph and general saves in the graph database. Now we'll get to the query part. So uh, before getting to the query part, uh, I would like to show that uh, what is the difference between the graph reg and uh, in reg in practical way. Like uh, you can ask uh, simple questions to the reg also, and with graph reg also they will uh, res respond equally. But like when we ask questions about the holistic view of the whole document, like uh, well, there is a question while <laughs> like mention top three themes of the document, so it is asking for the holistic view of the whole document. So in the reg. Uh, it what it does it is uh, it, it does a similarity search based, based on the uh, vector embeddings so like when we uh, when i will ask the mentor mention top five themes of the document it, it will generate embeddings for this query and then it will uh, then the embeddings uh, then it will uh, calculate distance between the embedding of this query and the embeddings of the uh, that are stored in the vector database but uh, as uh, we can see that uh, there will be no similarity shown between this query and the embeddings stored in the database because uh, there will be no mention of this query in the document. So what it, it will do, it will <coughs> pass the whole document to our LLM. So that's what it does here. When I ask this question to Reg, 
uh, it shows the rate limit exceeded because <coughs> the context window of LLM is not <coughs> that much <coughs> that much that it it can or uh, take the whole book as context. So that's where it fails because it it it, uh, it has it does not have the structured way that <coughs> that can uh, answers about the holistic view or the or answer about the complex queries. So, but when I ask the same question to the graph reg, it will not provide the whole to, uh, document to the uh, uh, our LLM. Instead, it will <coughs> traverse to the nodes and <coughs> and look for the only relevant information that are used for that are useful for our query. So, like yeah, here I am going to put my query and some top five themes of the document and. <coughs> Here it has shown the, uh, I asked the same question to the rec where it failed, but here it is uh, providing the response where clearly, like where you can, you can see that philosophy and wisdom, courage and fearlessness, it has provided top five themes that are uh, of the document. So uh, that's where the graph reg excels for more than reg. That's all good from my side. Okay, start. So that was very nice session. So basically, graph rack is more capable of understanding the document instead of just uh, uh, reading through the content like the rack does. Yeah. Okay, so that was nice approach by the graph. Nice explanation, Siddhartha. So. <clears throat> Fine. So thanks to that for delivering such a wonderful session. Uh, if anyone has any question, feel free to ask. I think uh, this is a good platform to sort uh, their queries. Anyone has any questions? If anyone has any query, they can reach out to me later on Teams. I will be happy to help whenever you need. Cool. Fine, so I think uh, we are good to wrap up this uh, knowledge session. Thanks everyone Thanks for joining us and uh, have a happy everyone. weekend ahead. Happy the Saturday in advance. <laughs> <Stay> <laughs>